Claudia Kriviak, Vice President of Corporate Planning and Development at the Ontario Centres of Excellence. Um, I'd like to welcome you to today's Innovation Partners presentations. It is my pleasure to introduce to you a number of organizations who are partners in the innovation ecosystem here in Ontario. Oops, I'm just going to... Sorry about that. So um, once again, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, to a number of organizations who are partners in the innovation space here in Ontario. Each is either a department agency of the provincial or federal government, or they receive funding from the government. Together, they offer innovators and entrepreneurs in the province a variety of programs, opportunities, and advice to help them develop their research and businesses. Our first presentation this morning will be from the Networks of Centers of Excellence, and our pr presenter is Lisa Drillard. Lisa is the Program Deputy Director at NCE. Um, the Network of Centers of Excellence, or NCE, offers a suite of programs that mobilize Canada's best research development and entrepreneurial expertise and focus it on specific issues and strategic areas. If you have any questions, there should be an opportunity to ask them at the end of the presentation. Please help me welcome Lisa Drillard. Thank you very much, Claudia, and thank you to all of you for showing up so early in the morning. We're the warm-up act this morning with the NCE. I'm going to do an overview of the Networks of Centers of Excellence suite of programs, particularly in that we have a very busy competition year this year. Not active right now, but over the course of this year, we're running competitions in all of the programs we fund. So it's a very active year and a good opportunity to really flesh out the different programs and their, and their mandates. So our overarching mandate in the NCE Secretariat is to mobilize Canada's research talent in academic, private, and public sectors and to apply it to the task of de developing the economy. We do this through uh, a range of different programs. The NCE Classic program has been around for over 20 years, and it funds national virtual research networks of uh, a dozen, usually around a dozen universities, 100 uh, or... 100 to 200 researchers across the country to focus on multidisciplinary uh, research themes. Within that, there are a couple of smaller programs. One we have just run a competition for in the Knowledge Mobilization Initiative that fund, that uh, grants smaller tranches of funding up, up to five years and more in the half million dollar range, really just to focus on the mobilization of knowledge that has already been funded by the councils. And last year we uh, did launch the, the first Canada-India Research Centre of Excellence program near and dear to my heart that will have a, a competition this year is the uh, Center of Excellence for Commercialization of Research. I'm the director of that program. That was established as one of the flagship programs of the federal s and strategy to focus on funding the operating costs of the commercialization of research. The business-led NCEs was modeled on the uh, NCE Classic program, but needs to be led by business partners. And the industrial R&D internship program is delivered by uh, delivery agents that compete for the opportunity to deliver um, business-facing internships in Canada. So in the NCE Classic program, and I'm just going to walk really quickly through the mandates of the program and flash up a slide that shows who is in each of those programs so that you can get a sense of what the, uh, what the successful candidates have been and who you recognize. Uh, the NCE Classic uh, program currently funds 14 active networks, and it unites research researchers in large academic-led networks that focus on issues that are critical to Canadians. They're focused on multidisciplinary research. They really do need to engage researchers funded by all of the granting councils. All of the granting councils sit on the main steering committee for all of our programs and take the final funding decisions. The NCEs need to engage partners not only from academia, but from, from industry and their end users. And they do have a strong focus on training and uh, international collaboration. 
The business-led NCEs, as I say, were modeled on the NCE program. This was piloted in 2008, made permanent last year. Uh, look, works on the same um, research network model, but the applications need to be conceived of and driven by the industry partners of those networks, clearly collaborating with their academic partners, but focusing the raison d'etre of each network on a key industry sector challenge that the network's research aims to address. Um, they need to be responding directly to pro problems that are identified by the in Canadian industrial sector. And they also do support training, but it's going to be um, uh, in a collaboration between the academic and industry partners. So this slide here just gives you a quick overview of the networks that we have funded to date. You will um, probably recognize a range of these depending on the sector you hail from. Uh, ArcticNet is our biggest um, network, but we have a, lo a large uh, portfolio in health and life sciences with, stro with stroke network, um, stem cell network, allergy gene and environment network. In the business-led NCEs, you do see four listed there. Um, those were the original four that were piloted in 2008. We had a renewal competition last year, and CQDM was the successful um, network that got follow-on funding in that area. And in the manufacturing and engineering space, we only have one, which is Auto 21. Now, the Centers of Excellence for Commercialization, oh, and the one thing I will note, because uh, when I get to the end, I would like to take more time in the presentation to focus on the new competitions, which are going to be in uh, the C Centers of Excellence for Commercialization and Research program, as well as the NCE Classic program I just uh, described. So the CSER program funds currently 21 active centers, and the point of that program is to support hubs of commercialization that bring together private sector and academic partners to facilitate com uh, commercialization in a broad range of models of bringing research to market. They offer um, a very flexible type of support. It's one of the programs that provides the most operating funds. It, it, that is the core um, uh, raison d'etre of the program, is to support the operating costs of commercialization centers, whereas generally operating costs are only a fraction of the, the expenses covered by an NCE. And um, they do, it is a matching program, so uh, as is the uh, business-led NCE program, where much of the overarching costs need to be covered by industry and other partners. Currently, um, we've got a, a, a broad portfolio of centers. Some of these on the screen here um, are in the last year of their operation. We, the first 11 uh, centers uh, did compete for additional funds. I'm careful in my wording there because we don't consider the uh, additional funding opportunity in CSER to be a real renewal. It's a real opportunity for additional funds to complete the mandate of developing a center that can be self-sustaining. So within this list, there are, there are some that are in their last year of operation, but you'll see that we have a very um, balanced breakdown of centers in all the priority areas of the federal S&T strategy that is by design. Uh, we have a mandate to um, target the investments in this program in these core um, sectors of the fed federal s and strategy, but we do have a couple that are um, multidisciplinary that support researchers and commercialization in a broad range of areas. So this is what I'm really here for, and I imagine the most of you are here for as well, is to hear about the competitions that we have ongoing this year. Uh, Open competitions right now include the CSER program I just described as well as the um, NCE program. However, just in these last months, some of you may be aware or may have even uh, be applicants to the uh, uh, new competition for the business-led NCE program and the, rec and the recent uh, NCE um, uh, knowledge mobilization program. And we are in the process now of running a competition for that extension funding for the second cohort of CSERs that were funded in 2008. So this, in a nutshell, is the, are the key dates for the application process for the new CSER competition. 
Uh, people are scrambling now to put their notice of intent together if they have an inkling that the CSER program may be right for them. I'll speak a little bit to the notice of intent process and why we have introduced this because this is new and is has only been introduced for the newer programs. There's no notice of intent for NCEs. The reason is it's been around 20 years. Most people have a good idea of what an NCE is and what all of its working parts are. Um, there's not a lot of mystery to it. Because the uh, business leads and the CSERs and the no knowledge mobilization are relatively new and we've really expanded our suite of programs, we've introduced this step of including a notice of intent so that applicants can put their idea forward and then have an opportunity to discuss it with the program to identify fit to program. Applicants will not be screened out by the secretariat or any adjudication body at that notice of intent stage. Um, it <clears throat> is really there as an opportunity for a dialogue so that um, applicants can self-select to apply for something else if they don't feel that the program is a good fit for them. The main le letters of intent then will be due late this summer and they will be adjudicated by by um, the private sector advisory board later in the fall. And then the final decisions uh, will be taken in the spring of next year with funding expected to start in September. So let's go into the nuts and bolts of what a CSER is for new, new applicants. CSERs are federally funded not-for-profits. That's an important element. All of these networks and centers we fund, though they may just come together as, as co-applicants on a big a um, application, by the time we cut the check, each of the applicants we fund have to be incorporated as not-for-profits. So they get a little window between we, when we disclose to them that they've been successful and when we actually make a payment, but they need to be incorporated not-for-profits with their own board that will be spelled out in the application and a clear mandate for what that uh, not-for-profit uh, objectives will be. The, their goal, part of their objectives, need to be bridging the gap between innovation and, co and commercialization, matching clusters of research expertise with, um, with business expertise in the community, sharing knowledge and resources to bring new products and technologies and services to market faster in a broad range of commercialization models, and they need to fall within the uh, priority areas of environment, natural resources and energy, health and life sciences, information and communication and technology, and a fifth one that is not on there, which is um, uh, management and finance expertise. So we have some that may not be clearly in energy or in health and life sciences, but there is a fifth priority area, which is really just expanding the level of, of literacy and engagement around business management, business and finance. The evaluation criteria have not changed, but I'm going to walk through a few different uh, changes that have occurred within the programs. The, the, the main criteria are benefits to Canada, the track record of the applicants, and the strength of their business plan. But some of the pro program changes have really focused on the clarity of those business plans and uh, showing a clear path to sustainability. Sustainability has always been a criteria of the program. But we have tried to clarify what we mean by this. Clearly, it's expected that centers will help companies and researchers commercialize their research, but they also need to walk their, their own talk by, by having their own path to not only having their own revenue streams, but also developing partnerships that will keep the boat afloat in the long term. The idea here is to seed over five to 10 years centers that will engage um, the community they serve and demonstrate enough value that their partners will participate in their long-term sustainability. The funding term, in, in, in light of that, the funding term has been expanded such that um, it is for the centers to identify their own life cycle, how long they're going to need to become self-sustaining, although we won't fund more than a, fi a five-year chunk. So you need to identify if it's going to take you eight years to become self-sustaining, set out the plan and milestone in the, milestones in the application, and then we will fund the first tranche of funding up to five years, and then there will, it will be adjudicated again to see if that center is eligible for follow-on funding. Now, some of the lessons learned from the last competition are really call on centers to look at that long-term life cycle and, and the full expectation of what they will need to be self-sustaining. 
we really see that centers need a diversity in their partnerships and multiple funding sources beyond just their own internally generated revenue to reduce the need for the CSER funding, and that's a new criteria as well, as you need to see there needs to be a decreasing reliance on the CSER funding over that life cycle. They need to have very strong governance and strong boards um, that respond to a very tight governance structure. That should be spelled out in the applications as well, and a very clear operating plan that shows the resources that are key to meeting their objectives. Oh. Now, I've only got a few minutes. I don't mean to give NCE short shrift, but uh, I do think it's a little better understood. But we do have an ongoing uh, NCE competition happening this year as well. The letters of intent for that program are due in August, with the full applications being due in June of 2014. This is also by design. NCEs can be funded for up to 15 years, and so it's not uncommon for applicants to take a year to two years or longer to really develop the network of researchers and come to a common frame of mind around their research objectives over that long arc of time uh, in pulling their application together. Um, unlike the uh, CSER and business-led programs that are adjudicated by a private uh, um, private sector advisory board. The NCE classics are reviewed by a standing selection committee, which is comprised of very senior academics from around the world. And that adjudication process will happen next year with final decisions being taken by the NCE steering committee in October and funding of Mar in March of 2014. So it's a nice long arc. A typical NCE network is hosted by an academic institution, which is different from the CSERs or the business leds that don't have to be. Um, they are, uh, as the others are, federally incorporated not-for-profits. They generally engage 100 to 100 um, trainees, uh, highly qualified people, and 50 to 75 professors in, the, in their key theme. They have to be multidisciplinary, and they have to engage their end users. The last five years of the um, hoped-for 15-year arc of funding for NCEs needs to be driven by the needs of those end users, be, be they industry partners, health, um, health systems, community partners. The, and the last tranche of funding really needs to focus on knowledge mobilization and applying the research that they do. So the 2015 competition will be focused on um, NCEs solving problems through partnerships. Um, so w this is the first new competition um, uh, where we are really starting to clarify what that end stage of an NCE should look like in terms of the networks being user driven. And we really want to see in the early days the competition, the um, uh, applicants framing their, their, uh, their mandate with that last goal in mind. So really only two thirds of the arc of work that they're putting forward in the uh, NCE application should be around the research and the last five years really needs to be around moving it out into the end user community. The NCE uh, program criteria have also not changed uh, over, over these many years. They focus on the excellence of the research program, uh, the development of highly qualified people, networking and partnerships, knowledge translation and exchange, and the management of the networks. Now, the criteria haven't changed, but I can tell you that within the Standing Selection Committee, both at the application stage and at the review of the progress of these centers, they really do look at number five first. Good management and strong governance within these sectors, that is to say having professional managers, really leading the management of the network and, and working in a fair basis with all of the researchers in that community as really being seen as the key element in the success of the networks in the, in the long term. So that's it for our programs and competitions, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks for your talk. Um, I was wondering if you could say a bit more about the Canada-India Research Center of Excellence initiative and whether there will be similar initiatives with other countries. 
Um, that remains to be seen. Uh, there, there, the Canada, the CERCI, as we like to call it, the uh, Canada India Research Centre of Excellence, was funded in uh, the budget the year before last. It is only one centre focused on research collaboration between Canada and India. There has not been any news, so far as we know, of uh, at other centres with collaboration in other countries. Um, but it's it's not out of the question. We're we're always being asked to um, consider uh, what the best new partnerships in that in that uh, in the international sphere would look like. But even the model we are using to um, uh, establish that collaboration uh, with an important emerging e economy is uh, really a work in progress for us. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, that's a good point for all of the networks and centers. So, sir, so the networks and centers have a broad membership in terms of their partner institutions, and it is not static. The list of research projects that get funded as part of any network or center um, does definitely change over time. So if people have an interest, not just in, Cer in the Circe uh, Center, but any of the networks or centers that I talked about earlier, there are always opportunities for collaborative research, for collaborative, research, for collaborative um, commercialization projects, and to approach those networks and centers directly, particularly if your academic institution is one of their network members. Um, and that can also change if they are not. Networks have the opportunity to include a new academic me member if there is a good case made for why the match makes sense. Sure. Um, there's two very tightly related issues, and I won't try to, to divorce them. The one is g strong governance in not-for-profits. And there is any, any good management school in Canada or, or resources close to you or business, me business and academic mentors can point you to best practices in the governance of not-for-profits. In our space, whether it's uh, not-for-profit in the research area or particularly in commercialization or research, good governance means very um, clear processes for managing conflict of interest. To ensure that the way members are engaged on the boards is fair and transparent and the, and the um, uh, governing bodies can justify both their funding decisions or the decisions to take up new technologies or opportunities in the commercial space. And also to ensure in the Caesars, it's even more challenging because we want to see that industry engagement on the boards, which naturally means there are going to be conflicts. There are going to be times when there are companies on those boards that may have a commercial interest in some of the areas of technology that are, bringing, are being brought forward. So the centers need to have very clear processes for people to recuse themselves from different decisions, to disclose any of those conflicts, and also to manage the governance structure of the organization. So in some instances with uh, CDRD out in Vancouver and even Mars Innovation uh, here in Toronto, uh, some of these centers have developed mechanisms such as having an investment trust when they have equity in firms where there are people in their board with, with an interest or are developing a, a for-profit arm of the entity with a contractual obligation to fund money back into the not-for-profit space, but in a way that accomplishes the goal of commercialization with, uh, but still following in under the CRA rules for a not-for-profit. So good governance is key, and cri critical to good governance is also having clear and transparent lines of accountability to a cadre of experienced and talented senior managers within the organization. So even at the application stage, we want to see who you've got in terms of management talent, who you hope to recruit on those boards, and a clear org chart about how it's all going to work together and who's going to report to whom. Are there any other questions? If there are any others that you're harboring but don't want to ask here, our, ta our de um, table is right behind you, the NCE table, and we've got all kinds of material on the upcoming competitions. Thanks, Claudia. Please join me in giving Lisa a warm hand of applause. Thank you.
In a few minutes, we'll begin our next presentation, which is from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our next innovation partner presentation from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, or more commonly known as NSERC. Here to present today is Tibor Turi. Tibor is the manager of the Ontario Regional Office at NSERC. The agency supports university students in their advanced studies, promotes and supports discovery research, and fosters innovation by encouraging Canadian companies to participate and invest in post-secondary research projects. If you have any questions, um, Tibor will be able to take them at the end of his presentation. Please join me in welcoming Tibor. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, to be here at uh, Discovery and to see so many smiling faces. I'd like to um, uh, give you a presentation on getting started with NSERC innovation opportunities. Uh, getting started is very important because it leads to wonderful outcomes, we hope. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to uh, make sure we all understand what I mean, at least, when, uh, when I talk about innovation. Uh, here's a great definition by the Conference Board of Canada brought out uh, in the fall. Um, a process through which economic or social value is extracted from knowledge through the creation, diffusion, and dif uh, transformation of ideas to produce new or improved products or services or processes. So with that in mind, let's move ahead and talk about how to uh, jumpstart innovation. So I'm from the, uh, NSERC is part of the uh, Tri-Council of Funding Agencies in Canada. Uh, the other two are social sciences and, and uh, health. Um, but of course, we work together in a number of different ways. Uh, 20 years ago, this is more what the model looked like. We were basically working in, in uh, uh, I wouldn't say isolation, but uh, I'd say we'd be, we would be working well within our, our own kind of uh, mandates and our own uh, topic areas. These days, it's a little bit different. We work well together, not only amongst ourselves uh, in the federal level, but we endeavor to work uh, together with many different groups, uh, provincially, municipally, and, uh, and with other groups as well. So that's the modern approach we're taking. Uh, and whenever you have that kind of approach, there's inevitably overlap. And uh, you can have projects that may have uh, multi-facets to it, some that may extend outside of what NSERC can support. So for that, I recommend going to science.gc.ca. It's a great way to, to tease apart which, which aspects of a, a given project may be uh, supportable by any given agency. And that's, that's becoming more and more relevant uh, as, as the complexity of projects uh, grows. So NSERC is an organization. Uh, we have a national staff, about 370 people, 350 of which are in the, uh, the Ottawa headquarters. But there are five regional offices across Canada. Uh, Ontario's is in Mississauga, Ontario. And uh, we happen to have five staff. The other offices have four staff. Uh, but 40% 40, 40 of the activity uh, that NSERC realizes is in Ontario. So we have a little bit of extra work to do here. Uh, our purpose as a regional office is uh, for promotion, uh, relationship development. We're there to get to know the people, the researchers, the, the companies, and the issues, and also to follow up. So we really want to provide full service as much as possible in the programs we offer. In a nutshell, $1.1 billion is the budget, at least in the last uh, fiscal year. Um, and our priorities can be divided into three different areas, uh, people, uh, investing directly into people in terms of uh, scholarships, uh, direct funding for individuals, uh, discovery, unleashing the creative power, basically uh, curiosity-based research, and uh, the last one, innovation, which is uh, what I'm going to focus on here. Uh, this is connecting and applying the strength of our research capacity to the challenges and needs of industry and society. So that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big chunk of 
the, the pie there, that's 31.5%. Uh, and that's the, act, uh, that's the, uh, the area that we act in in uh, the regional offices. I'm not going to go through the, some of the things that have happened, what have we managed to do over the past year, but we involve a lot of uh, different industry partners directly in projects, about uh, 2,400. Uh, we have um, $214 million in jointly funded uh, university industry research. Uh, that's not including the college piece. We are now also fund colleges as well. Um, we also have, as I mentioned before, we're deeply involved with collaboration amongst uh, our, our fellow uh, organizations, federally, provincially, et cetera. And um, in addition, we've accelerated more than uh, 61 university projects through proof of concept phase en route to commercialization. Again, that's important. So if you had a look at uh, all of the uh, research partnership programs opportunities at NSERC, this is what it would look like. This is the complete map. Uh, vertically, you see five different columns. Those are five different programs we offer. Under each program, we have a number of different grants. Now, I've highlighted two just to uh, focus on a little bit. The one that's industry-driven, collaborative, and that's in blue. And in green, we have the colleges programs that I mentioned before. So we're going to foc in, uh, focus in on uh, getting started on all this, because this, is gonna be, this could be somewhat overwhelming for companies approaching NSERC. But we have a way to introduce them, uh, uh, introduce you, if there are companies here, to, uh, to working together with an academic researcher that will be of benefit to you. Here's another way to look at it. Uh, this time, it's, um, it's kind of stacked in terms of technological maturity. That is, how close are we to market? And you can see each one of those programs uh, um, stratifies in a different place. Uh, commercialization program being closest to the market, of course, and uh, strategic partnerships where we're just testing some uh, general ideas to see what's out there is uh, at, uh, at the bottom there. So. Let's get our feet wet and get started. Uh, Engage grants have been a cornerstone over the past uh, three or so years. Uh, they've been a very important way and factor that uh, companies have come to know NSERC as, as a potential resource for, uh, for um, research and development that they can do to, again, to have an industry-driven um, project uh, get off the ground. It's a short project that you can do six months, $25,000, no cost to the company, which is, uh, which is uh, very valuable. That's one barrier that uh, we wanted to remove. We are so sure that, that you as a company will see value in working together with, uh, with a university researcher and gaining something from it, that uh, we are willing to, uh, to pay for this first date, this first uh, opportunity to work together for six months. And there's no application deadline. And the other interesting feature is that whatever, whatever results come out of this project work uh, are free to be used and utilized for, uh, for the benefit of the company. So this is very important. So once you have uh, established your relationship uh, with an Engage grant, another opportunity that goes beyond that is the full-blown collaborative research and development grant, the CRD. This is one that's been around for many years at NSERC. And with good reason, uh, because it's so flexible, it has the opportunity to uh, mold itself into whatever is needed. Anything from one to five years uh, it can be um, uh, more fundamentally based in terms of research. It can be very close to commercialization. It can be, um, it can be uh, the, the typical grant is about $75,000 per year, but you can, go, you can go up to half a million per year or even higher. And one of the interesting features of the CRD is is that uh, the cash that's put down by the company towards the project can be, um, can be leveraged up to two to one. And that leveraging power is very important for, for magnifying uh, the, the resources that a company can have and to gaining more from this industry-driven project. So the application can be uh, received anytime uh, and uh, success rate's fairly high, about 80 to 90%. So let's move on to the college uh, project uh, grants that we have. Uh, these are called Applied Research and Development Grants, the ARD grants. They come in three different sizes, three different levels. The first level is exactly analogous to Engage. It's an introductory grant, just to get your feet wet, just to get started. 
we're so sure that that this new relationship that that the company has with a uh, prospective college would would amount to something valuable that uh, that we are going to basically um, offer twenty five thousand dollars for that six month project to take place. No cash required from the company, so that's that's a great advantage, um, and and we like to um, we like to. Uh, see this move on to the second level, hopefully we, uh, we will have a larger project come out, or perhaps you're ready right away to, to go for something a little bit larger. So if you have, if you have an ask from NSERC anywhere from between twenty five to 75000 you can again uh, come to the ARD, and uh, similar to the CRD that we just saw, you can leverage your, your, your cash plus in-kind uh, up to two to one. So again, this is a great way to magnify what you would be investing uh, in terms of a project anyway. Uh, above 75K, uh, the leverage drops uh, to one to one. And the reasoning there is uh, if there's so much uh, money being invested, likely it's quite close to commercialization. And uh, for that reason, the, R, the uh, applied research portion uh, may not be uh, quite as, uh, as um, uh, necessary. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you in terms of uh, getting your feet wet and uh, getting to know NSERC is uh, probably some of the biggest bang for your, for your buck that you can get, uh, the industrial scholarships and fellowships that we have uh, at universities. This is a great way that uh, um, uh, everyone benefits. The, the companies have a chance to, um, to have basically an extended interview to, uh, to see how a particular candidate at various levels may do in the setting of their own company. Um, it's, uh, it's great f in terms of experience for the, uh, for the student or the, the fellow. They get a chance to actually see what it's like to work in that environment. Uh, and uh, two out of three times, this relationship continues past, past this industrial scholarship and fellowship. So it's a very it's a great way to also connect the university um, to the company. Uh, many times companies come to this uh, program first as an introduction to the university, and that in turn leads on to further collaborations. Uh, what better way than uh, than to discover uh, some great students working at your facility and wondering where do they come from? Can I find out more about, uh, about that group, about that professor, about that university? So anecdotally, it's, a, as I said before, a, a great bang for your buck. And that's all I have uh, to, to get started. Beyond that, we have other programs as well. But uh, hopefully, you'll uh, consider NSERC when you want to get started and uh, tap into the uh, to the knowledge base that we have, uh, a world-class knowledge base that we have developed in Canada. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yes. The ENGAGE program. Uh, I believe that I was told once that uh, uh, the, the objective of this program is to make a connection between the industry partner and uh, professor or research partner. Correct. If the company had done a project, research project with OCE within one of OCE programs, and the company would like to continue the cooperation with the same uh, researcher and uh, and CERC engage umbrella, is it possible? So the connection between the the company and the professor has been a uh, research partner has been already established. So okay. could we go to NSERC with the same professor? Uh, okay. So. Uh, the one stipulation for engage is that it has to be a first time, uh, first time collaboration. So it must be the first time they work together. You can turn it around. You can go to engage first, and then go to another program such as uh, OCE, TPS, or or whatever. So that works, and in fact, uh, quite a few do in fact find other programs that that might be more suitable. So engage should come first in order to be eligible to to uh, to receive the award for engage. Thank you. Please join me in thanking Tibor for an engaging presentation.
This concludes this portion of the morning's presentations. I hope you have enjoyed them and have gained valuable information about these organizations and the programs that they offer. We will be taking a break and the Innovation Partner presentations will resume here in about an hour at 11 o'clock. Thank you.